friends, welcome back for today's video. Today's video is on the book Blush by Rachel DeLoon. I totally did not think about putting on my pink shirt when I sat down to do this video. Isn't that kind of funny because blush is pink in color, but it's a gorgeous day here where I live. I mean, 70 degrees in November in Chicago, unheard of people. <laughs> So it's a little warm in my house. I have the doors open, so I put a short sleeve shirt on. And it just so happened to go with the book title. Funny how that works out sometimes. Blush is Leo's story. If you saw my video on The Two Halves of My Heart by Rachel, Leo was part of that story, and now this is his own book. If you saw that video, you know I loved that story. Oh my gosh. I cried a lot in that book. It was the first book of Rachel's I have read, so now this blush is the second, and let me tell you, I'm such a fan of hers. I get it. I get her writing. Everything she's trying to tell us, at least I hope, <laughs> I get it. My heart just knew it was in for a good ride when I opened this book. Leo, I loved Leo in the two halves of my heart, so I was anxious to read Blush, and oh my gosh, I continue to love him. Just know going in that we, if you haven't read the two halves of my heart, not that you're gonna get spoilers, and you can totally read it as a stand, Blush as a standalone, but you'll get a little bit more about Leo and where he's coming from and the place that he's in when Blush starts, if you've read that. I knew where he was when this book started and oh, my heart just broke for him. He took on Madison's death in a way that really spoke to me about his character and how Madison's death has affected him trying to go on with his life and the responsibility that he carries in wanting to make sure that Madison isn't forgotten that he that he himself, Leo, does not look at the gift that he's given in his life of living, that he doesn't take that on lightly. He feels like he has, how do I explain this? He feels like with Madison's death, it was a wake-up call for him. And although he's totally lost where the, when this book starts, of course, he feels a responsibility to go forward and live a life that Madison didn't get to live. Oh my gosh, really sad, really heavy, and I totally connected with it. Right off the bat, this is what Leo says. The funeral gutted me. I chose to stand at the back of the crowd, hidden by umbrellas and wall-to-wall -wall black. Oliver wouldn't notice me here. Why would he? He was burying his brother today, my best friend but I couldn't take the risk of making his day harder than it already had to be. Just looking at Grace made me want to turn around and walk away, but I owed it to Madison to be here. Oh, I remember that, well, of course, in Two Halves of My Heart, and whew, yeah, makes me a little teary to think about that time and all that they went through. Leo is the type of character that totally speaks to me. He's protective but he's also sweet and sensitive. He just, yes, he's the kind of guy I like. <laughs> but anyway, so as lost as he is when this book starts, his nature can't help but take over and he sees the situation happening when he's on his way home on the train and he sees a guy do something and act a certain way towards a female passenger on the train and he steps in. That female passenger ends up being Astrid, who ends up being the other character in this book. And when he meets her, not only does he want to protect her because he doesn't like the scene that he sees going on, but instantly he's like knocked like stupid by her. He's like, wow, she's wow, I've never felt this way before. Astrid kind of feels the same way. She was interesting. I liked Astrid a lot. I really did. But <laughs> uh, she did some things that really kind of pissed me off. 
I was definitely more in Leo's corner throughout this whole book, although I wanted the best for her. And there were times I understood the decisions that she made, but she made me mad sometimes. In any case, when they first meet, they're both like, wow, you know, they have this insane instant connection. And I always love that first meeting part. There was some drama that comes up shortly after they meet with one of her friends. She's got two really good girlfriends, Sawyer and Belle. Belle or Bella? I can't remember which one. It's either Belle or Bella. Sawyer irked me. And I wondered if there was going to be more that kind of went on with her and where Rachel was going with that. Astrid plays a little coy and hard to get with Leo. And I was like, girl, how can you resist him? But... She also understood that she had to kind of be careful with him. She knew he seemed to have some secrets. She knew he was, he played his cards close to the vest, but yet felt this a, a connection with him that she couldn't ignore. And they certainly acted on that connection. Boy, did they act on that connection. But this is from her perspective. Some people might look at my tattoos or my colored hair and make an assumption, not looking at what's beneath the obvious. And some people might look at your freckles and just see a boy. What do you see, Astrid? The sultry tones of his voice skyrocketed the intensity between us. My heartbeat picked up as if he'd asked to hear my deepest desires. I swallowed the heat and got back to our conversation. Behind your golden eyes and your boyish freckles, I see someone keeping secrets. I can't decide if they are yours or someone else's. I took a gamble at the last bit. Leah was dangerous to me in a way I hadn't felt before, as if he had an invisible thread pulling my thoughts from my mind. I wanted to share myself with him, to tether to him was instant and scary, and I needed space to figure out which way I wanted to go with him. He stepped a little closer towards me, his frame dwarfing mine. The air heated around us, and everything faded into the background. That undeniable pull anchored me to him. We don't know each other yet. I think it's a little too early to start talking secrets. His eyes searched right through me as if he was searching for some of my secrets. And I love that I think the title from this book came from, because Astrid mentions it a couple times, and girl, let me tell you, I understand that Leo makes her blush. And I myself am a blusher. I always have been. It kind of annoys me. I think I actually have gotten a little bit better as I get older because maybe things aren't so embarrassing to me anymore. I don't know. Maybe I don't take myself too, ser too seriously or I've lived enough, enough life that things don't surprise me anymore. But let me tell you, my husband can still make me blush. And that being said, I understood and I really liked the times that Astrid talked about that in relation to how she felt about Leo because I totally understood it. They can't really seem to get their footing. They have moments together and Astrid even says maybe he's just meant to be her what if guy and that everyone has one, don't they? And I thought about that and I was like, yeah. We all do, don't we? And, <laughs> yeah, I understood her a lot in that moment. And, of course, I wanted them together because if that's what made Leo happy, then I wanted him to be with Astrid. <laughs> but that moment really made me think. There's a part to this book where I feel like I have to kind of stop and be kind of vague because I don't want to give you a spoiler. And there's a decision that Astrid makes about a certain situation that I feel like if I tell you, it's a spoiler. And I don't want to tell you that part. But what I can tell you, and I kind of alluded to it before a little bit, is that she makes a decision that really pissed me off. And I wanted her to have more trust in him. And I wanted him, Leo, to have the chance to be and do the right thing because I know he would. And she sold him short in this situation. And it really made me mad. <laughs> I was very protective of him in that time. 
And yet the way Rachel writes it, I understood, and it was actually good for Leo. He was able to ground himself and figure out where he wanted to go in life, and he got some of his confidence back, and things started to work out for him and he had a plan and a vision of where he was going to go and he was doing it so i was happy for him and this is something leo says everything had finally fallen into place the business was taking off and going where i'd hope after all the hard work and it was an effing relief for the first time since madison's death i felt positive like i was doing something meaningful with my life that i could be proud of that was important to me along with acknowledging the darkness of my past and still being here to live in the light. He was in such a good spot and it really gave me all the warm fuzzy feelings that I love about a good romance. The epilogue was one of my favorite parts of the book. I don't know why, it picks up two years later, but it just was showing me because it was two years later that everything was okay and the happily ever after was exactly what I had hoped for. I really liked it. Let me know if you had read The Two Halves of My Heart or Blush or which other of Rachel's books you have read. I would love to hear. Thanks so much for taking a moment to consider subscribing and hit the thumbs up button. When you do that, it not only helps my channel, but it will help this video get better visibility here on YouTube. Don't forget to come over to my social media, which is Cat Reads Romance on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're new here, welcome. Thanks so much for clicking on the video. I hope you will consider reading Blush or The Two Halves of My Heart or any of the other books that I talk about on my channel. I always include in the description box an Amazon link to the book that I have talked about in the video. So in this case, it would be Blush. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.